Hello, my name's Paul and welcome to another one of my Pipedrive training videos. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the calendar sync options in Pipedrive and give you some tips for getting your settings set up correctly to sync with your Google, Outlook or Microsoft Calendar. If you have any questions after this video, please leave me a comment below. Don't forget to check out the descriptions to learn more about my consulting services if you want one-on-one -on -one support and you can sign up to my Pipedrive newsletter as well to get regular tips and tricks sent to your inbox. So here we are in Pipedrive. Let me start by just briefly talking about the purpose of the calendar sync feature. The reason you might want to sync your calendar is so that activities, these are the uh, to-do list items that you create here in Pipedrive, for example, a sales meeting or a call that you have with a lead. If you want those activities to show up on your Google or Outlook calendar, the other thing that you can do is you can sync your Google or Outlook or Microsoft Calendar with Pipedrive so that if you create an entry in your calendar, that syncs back into Pipedrive as well. So one of the first things, uh, let's go to the calendar settings. One of the first things you will have to decide is do you want to enable either the one-way or the two-way sync? So like I said, the one-way sync is that first option that I described where if I create an activity in Pipedrive, like I need to follow up with someone, do I want that to show on my Google Outlook calendar. That's what I've done. That's what quite a lot of people do. The other option is you can set up a two-way sync. That means that not only do the activities sync to your calendar, but if you create a calendar appointment in your Google Calendar, let's say, that will sync and it will actually create an activity in Pipedrive. The reason you might want to do that is for a couple of reasons. The main one is if you are using the scheduler, uh, so where you can propose available times and you can send people your availability. In order for this to work and to send people times that you are available, it's sort of necessary to see what slots you have available during the day. And to see that, you probably want to see events on your Google Calendar in here. So that's why you might want to set up a two-way sync. The, the issue that I have with the two-way sync is that it actually creates an activity on your to-do list. So here's my activities for today, which I've actually completed. And when I sync a calendar entry, it's actually going to create an activity here, which means I have to check it off and mark it as complete when it's done. And just from experience, talking to a lot of clients, I know that quite a lot of people find this sort of counterintuitive. It feels a bit odd to have to tick off that you've done uh, a meeting that's synced across from your calendar. What I find is most people aren't aware that, of how this works. And so they end up with loads of overdue activities that are now going red. And you see a, probably a big number up here in your activities, like 50 or 100 that are now overdue. And so I, it just can contribute to your activities getting a little bit messy. So it's just something to be aware of if you do use that two-way calendar sync. Now, some options, if you do use two-way sync, some options to make it a little bit easier is number one, you can create a different calendar category to sync with. So if I'm in my Google Calendar account, I could create down here a new calendar and I could call this Pipedrive, for example. That way, when I, when I set that up, I will see that as an option here when I've connected my account. And that means only calendar entries from that category will sync over to my Pipedrive account. So that's one way that you can work around this issue a little bit. It will still mean that you have to mark off certain activities and mark them as complete. And so to get around that, if you don't want to have to manually check off those events that you've done throughout the day, you could actually get around that with a simple automation. So if you are on the um, uh, professional plan or higher, no, excuse me, advanced plan or higher, you have the automation capabilities. So here's a really simple workflow. I've said when a new activity is created, that's my trigger event. And then I've put a condition in here so that only for activity types that are calendar event. So I've chosen that here. And this calendar event, this you can choose uh, when you are syncing your calendar to Pipedrive, you can actually specify what activity type do you want to sync that as here. So save calendar events to Pipedrive as calendar event. That way, if we now look at my automation, when new activities that are created and they're set to calendar event, uh, I can perform an action. And in this case, the action is for the specified activity from my trigger. I want to update the status or the, uh, let's go here. I want to update done to yes. So what that means is a new activity will be created. If it's set to the calendar event type, uh, which it will be because that's how it's synced across, then it automatically gets marked as complete. So using a simple automation like that means you could set up the two-way sync and have those events automatically get checked off so that you don't have to do that at the end of the day. It just means that it'll help keep everything a little bit more tidy and organized. Now, the final thing worth talking about with the calendar events here is you can choose how many different calendar entries to sync 
uh, sorry, what types of calendar entries to sync to your calendar. So for example, with me, I've chosen maybe, I want to sync calls and meetings, but uh, emails, deadlines, competitive analysis, I don't need those to show up on my calendar. Um, they're just gonna kind of add mess. So you can selectively sync which activity types from Pipedrive you want to show up in your Google Calendar. So it's worth pay paying attention to that as well. When you have your calendar connected, you can then go about your pipe drive activity as normal. When you create activities on contacts or deals that you are following up on, uh, you can set the activity type just like you normally would. So I might say, right, I need to do a call and I'm gonna do this tomorrow at 4 p.m. and it's gonna take 30 minutes. And so specifying the time here, that's obviously the time that it will occupy on my calendar. I can actually see when that's going to be in this little preview on the right hand side. I can put in a location if I like. And more recently, Pipedrive has added the option to set whether you are free or busy. So this corresponds with the free or busy setting in, um, in your Google Calendar or Outlook settings. Uh, some calendars use this basically to let your colleagues know if you're available or not. So this is kind of allowing you to basically create activities that are perfectly in sync with your Google account. Any notes should sync across as well. Uh, because this is an activity, I can choose to sync this and upload it to a deal, a contact, and an organization. And finally, if I do put a, a contact in here, so if I put Haley's name, I can choose to invite that person as well. So just like setting up a, a calendar entry in your Google or Outlook calendar, you can usually send invites. I can do that right here from Pipedrive as well. Pipedrive will then send them an email and they'll be able to accept that invitation. So there you have it. Those are some tips for getting your calendar settings set up correctly. I would strongly encourage you when you are getting started with Pipedrive or even if you've been using it for a little while, just double check your calendar settings. I do know that especially if you've got that two-way sync set up, your activities may be getting a little bit messy because you've had loads of old calendar events pulled into your account. Uh, cleaning that up will just help you to get everything a little bit more organized. And uh, I would just encourage everyone to take a look at those settings. Like I said, if you have any questions, please leave me a comment below. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.